Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another news video. For your convenience, there are timestamps down below in the description and comments so you can skip around to whatever news topic you would like to listen to the most. Don't forget to leave a like or dislike if you didn't like the video and subscribe if you are brand new. Let's go ahead and talk about things in the world of gaming. So one big, huge thing that Nintendo did today is they did a very much needed Switch update. But... It's about four years too late. It's kind of ridiculous that it took Nintendo this long to make uh, one of these features that should have been essential to the Nintendo Switch finally available for use. Now, what is it? Well, taking a look at their tweet, they put an update. The latest Nintendo Switch update is now available. It includes the ability to pair Bluetooth devices for audio output. Oh my God. Nintendo, thank you so much for finally providing four years later the ability for your gamers to use your outdated hardware to do something as simple as pair a Bluetooth audio device to like like your crappy speakers from 2008. <laughs> I don't know. It just always it's so hilarious. Like I'm I'm a Nintendo guy. Don't get me wrong. I'm a Nintendo guy. Always have been, always will be. But this is more evidence, man, that sometimes Nintendo is just slow to the game when it comes to certain features that they have. I mean, we still don't have the ability to change themes on the home screen of the Nintendo Switch or make folders or have a decent voice app to play online with people. <laughs> so it's like, come on, Nintendo. By the time... uh. By the time you get, you know, good stuff going and features going, the PlayStation 8 is going to be out. But let's go ahead and take a look. i sure I'm not alone in the sentiment. Right here, we actually have RGT85. Hashtag RGT85 shout out uh, right here. He says, audio output only, meaning Bluetooth headsets, but no Bluetooth mics. And that's back to that dilemma. Where's the audio input stuff? Where can we talk? Why do we still have to use the stupid Nintendo Switch app on our phones to play Splatoon? I don't know. I have no idea. There's like no games that the Switch has that I'm like even able to use voice chat at without having to use an app. I think if you plug in Friday 13th, you can use a USB mic, if I'm not mistaken. But to do Splatoon, to do um, anything that's any kind of like online supported game, you still have to do that or just go on Discord. But I mean, audio output with a Bluetooth speaker is something. Now let's look right here. Spawn Wave. He goes, that was random. <laughs> yeah, so you can see some of this is uh, Press Start Gaming. I love how they gave us the ability to use Bluetooth headphones, which is awesome. But can we get folders and themes for the Switch? Or even the ability to either text chat or voice chat with our friends on the Switch without the use of a Nintendo app? Exactly. That's what. That's all people want. I don't know why Nintendo has to make things difficult. Instead of tag, user, uh, you know, gamer tags or, you know, some kind of like PSN screen name like Sony and Xbox have. It's friend codes that are like 24 freaking numbers long that nobody's going to memorize and... Friend codes are jacked up. Voice chats act up. Matchmaking in games is jacked up. Like, come on, Nintendo. Uh, check this out. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, the more you want a Nintendo Direct to happen, the less likely Nintendo is going to announce. So you can see people are just kind of annoyed with um, the replies on this. What's the point of being able to connect a Bluetooth headset if I can't talk to people I'm playing the game with? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Anyways, I just thought that was funny. It's kind of a random update for sure. A uh, really random update for Nintendo to toss out at us. What can you do, though? Let's see if maybe they'll do something else. Now, let's go ahead and talk about something that was big in the news. We've been, uh, the last couple days, following Nintendo Switch having a price leak for the base model. I mean, uh, a price cut for the base model in Europe. And I was speculating, hey, you know what? Maybe they're going to do this all the way around. Maybe the United States, maybe Japan will also get a price cut because the Switch OLED model is coming out. 
literally like a couple weeks away. So maybe the base price will go down. Well, it's been debunked according to an insider. Not officially confirmed, but an insider is saying that it's not going to happen. That it's likely not going to happen. Now still, take it with a grain of salt. We all know this insider stuff. They're about 50-50% right or wrong. A lot of times it seems like they're just guessing. I'm not an insider. I don't claim to have inside knowledge, but this is still an interesting read. I like reading speculation. I like reading rumors because it's gaming. Gaming makes the world go round. But let's take a look at this article. Nintendo Switch will not get a price drop in the United States, according to an insider. No price drop, no price drop is planned for the Japanese market either. And this is kind of a bad move, I think, if this is going to be true. I think the Switch definitely, at least the launch base model, needs a price drop. So this goes on to start and say Nintendo fans in Europe were treated to a wonderful surprise yesterday. That being the base model Switch receiving a price drop within the region. This brought the council down to $269.99 in Europe and $259.99 in the UK. Reducing the price by 60 and 20 euros and pounds in Europe and UK respectively. Fans in North America need not to get their hopes up, however, and that's an unfortunate statement. However, as an insider says that Nintendo has no plans to reduce the price in the U.S. and Canada, as stated in a tweet. So here's the tweet from Stephanie Totilo. And as you can see, she says, Nintendo tells me yesterday's Switch price drop was just for Europe and the U.K. The trade price adjustment is for the European region only. There are no plans to change the manufacturer's suggested real retail price for any Switch model in the United States. That is a bummer for people that were hoping maybe there will be a price drop for the Nintendo Switch in the United States. So, uh, Stephen, Stephen, actually, I'm sorry, I said Stephanie. I'm po apologies, Stephen. <laughs> I couldn't read. Steven Totila, former editor-in-chief of Kotaku, claims to have sources with insider info on the topic and is quite sure that there won't be a price drop west of the Atlantic Ocean anytime soon. This also leaves Australia and Japan out of the discount fund, which some may see as surprising given that Nintendo has its roots in Japan. The base model Nintendo Switch is now even closer in price to the Nintendo Switch Lite as a budget console, while those who need a larger screen and better storage capacity will gravitate towards the Switch OLED model. Uh, now, here it goes on to say this is all the whole disclaimer. It says, of course, Nintendo often states that they have no plans to do something. Which they later end up doing. A lot of times Nintendo does stuff. Albeit a little later than uh, we would have wanted. And, and things like that. But never say never right. There's no knowing what their plans are. But for now North American consumers shouldn't hold their breath. Now I think if they were to do a price cut. Yeah maybe it would cause the Switch OLED model not to sell as much as they would want. But it definitely would sell a lot more Nintendo Switches and add to that worldwide number that is smashing records um, for Nintendo. What do you guys think right here? Do um, you think eventually there'll probably be one? I, I think it makes sense, you know, uh, at least to get whatever base model Switches are out there in distribution sold and off the shelf so that we just have a switch OLED model available worldwide to me it just makes perfect sense now let's continue on we're just gonna stay right on this Nintendo news right here uh, we've been kind of following a little bit of rumors a little bit of speculation that there would be a um, Nintendo Direct for the month of September nothing's been confirmed um, Usually in the past, according to insiders, Nintendo would have a Nintendo Direct within the first two weeks of September. Um, I think we're officially past that point. <laughs> so, you know, if they don't have one this week, I highly doubt we'll have one unless they totally just throw one out of their butt uh, out of nowhere. But here's an interesting leaker um, sharing some tidbits, some rumors and stuff. And again, take all this with a grain of salt. But this Nintendo Direct uh, leaks have Smash, Pokemon, and more. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what they have to say. So it says, with rumors 
that a September Nintendo Direct is imminent, a notable leaker with inside info has revealed some new details about the showcase. Including what games to expect, such as Smash and Zelda. Now that sounds too good to be true if we're going to get some Zelda news. Uh, especially after, you know, we had E3 happen and they kind of showed a trailer or a teaser. I really don't expect any Zelda news. <laughs> unless there's some kind of Hyrule Warriors update or something like that. Smash, I do agree. That'll probably happen. But right now, Metroid, Dro Metroid Dread is the... Um, the game coming up the killer app in october so i would say we might get a metroid Dr uh, dread focused nintendo direct but let's read what this has to say it says uh directs are presentations where the japanese video game juggernaut announces new games dlc shows off new trailers for existing titles and much more the last time nintendo had a large-scale presentation was back at e3 in june and fans have been eager for another especially with the christmas season approaching now this insider is known as samus hunter they spoke about the possibility of the Direct walking back their earlier belief that one would happen the week of September 12th. Instead, suggesting it might be later in the month or beyond. So this was the same leaker who said by September 12th. Now they're pushing it back. Goalpost has been moved. Um, they said Nintendo is banking heavily on September, partially for commercial reasons such as closing out the quarter. Third-party titles had several announcements planned for this month as well as release dates. I had already listed several of them at the beginning of the month. Additionally, Samus Hunter pointed to Metroid Dread and the final marketing push for the Switch OLED as clues that a September Direct is happening. However, they went on to point out there are some Japanese holidays next week, so I don't rule out that they might air it anyway. The next one after that will instead be TGS, so Tokyo Game Show. So, some interesting stuff. They do say that there's titles like triangle strategy which is project octopaths sequel or spin-off um i played that there was a demo in the eShop. they're planning on doing something revealed with that i'm looking forward to that this also says um that uh metroid dread metroid dread previews will be released soon so it'll basically be dedicated toward them they also pointed out that they expect Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends News on a monthly basis going forward. So more Pokemon. Uh, the biggest sign for an October Direct is that they state Smash's final DLC fighter could be arriving in October. There's also High World Warriors Age of Calamity DLC in November and Animal Crossing has content as well. So Mario Party side modes is something that might be discussed like the single player one and the remaining boards. With an overview trailer towards the end of the month. Uh, Mario Golf. I guess maybe a DLC update. Some Smash news in October. Animal Crossing October, November. So they'll probably do a big Fallout update if there is if there is one. And details about Advanced Wars as editor mode. So it is possible that Nintendo is also waiting to have firm dates for the first three months of the year. In Japan, some countries are back in a state of emergency and the situation may cause delays. Some agreements with third parties are unlikely to be broken though, the leaker concluded, but promise to look more into things and reach out to sources. So again, as always, take all this with a grain of salt when it comes to Nintendo Direct stuff and leaks and everything like that. Uh, you just, you never know, honestly. You never know till you don't know. You never shine till you don't grow. <laughs> so yeah um let's go ahead and take a moment from the gaming news to share some stuff so last video i showed i gotten some packages from uh forever limited a company out there i got um a few packages that i did not get to unbox i wanted to do an unboxing and show you guys um they sent it to the channel to the p.o box to share with you guys so that's one part of the P.O. Box to share stuff with you guys and show you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to open this sparkle container. I'm pretty sure this is just a mug or something like that. Um, you could even see the little hole to, I guess, show and share the mug. Um, the mug for the game. I did review sparkle on the Switch um, quite some time ago. If you want to check out or I, I did at least a Let's Play video. If you want to go ahead and check it out. I do need to start drinking a little bit more coffee. I bet you this is a heat um, color changing. Like you put the coffee in here and a design shows up. So um, I guess one day 
when I have some coffee, you'll go ahead and see it pop up on there. So that's always nice to have a little, a little thank you thing. But here's Sparkle, speaking of Ultimate Collection. Let's go ahead and open it. The collector in me is like, ooh, these are limited edition items and stuff. I don't want to open them. <laughs> but I will. Go ahead and... Yeah, I used my teeth to open it. Hashtag teeth to open. I want to hear that. I want to see that in the comments. So here we go. And uh looks like we have a seal right here. I, I honestly don't know what's in here or what it looks like or what they show. But here we go. Oh, it is a special box. Holding a PAL version of Sparkle, the Ultimate Collection. Take a look at that. I do have this game digitally. It's kind of like um, like a game where you start off like as a little particle and you eat the other like the other things and you grow and you get bigger. So this includes a complete Sparkle series, Sparkle Zero, Sparkle Two Evo, Sparkle Three Genesis, Sparkle Four Tales. And it looks like I also got an official soundtrack. So that's really cool. Official soundtrack. A poster of some sort in here. And a cleaning cloth. I've noticed a lot of things are starting to give like little cleaning cloths. A lot of like limited things and stuff like that. So that's that's not bad. So Forever Limited, I guess they spun off and started doing their own thing. So that is Sparkle the Ultimate Collection. I'm going to try to keep it in the box. Hopefully I have some space over there in my collection. Now we also got Thief Simulator. Now RGT85 always mentions this game when it goes on sale in the eShop. Apparently it's always in sale. Um, I still haven't played it. But I will probably most likely um, grab it really soon on his recommendation. That's two shoutouts to RGT85 by the way on this video. Hashtag RGT85. Maybe Bogus Sting will give a shout out. So let's open it. Let's look at it. Oh, look at this. We got some cash money. Some fake limited money. <laughs> Since it is a thief game. Mm, you gotta love that new game smell. We got a patch. For Thief Simulator. This one has a lot of stuff. Looks like a, like a keychain of like a crowbar. We have a, another cloth. Another cloth right here. Perfect. In the game. Look at this cover. Wow. That's nice. Become the thief. Steal in free roam sandbox neighborhoods. Observe your target. Gather info that will help you burger. And take the challenge. Rob the best secured houses. Alright. Like the wet bandits. In uh... <laughs> in Home Alone. So that's two games. We got Sparkle. Thief Simulator. Now... Speaking of RGT85, I know this next thing that I'm about to open is going to set him off. He was upset about it. Panzer Dragoon Remake. Yep, I got a... Not just this sent to me. I have something else in a second that I'm going to share. And this was a pleasant surprise by Forever Limited. Thank you guys so much for sending me this stuff, by the way. If you are a company or if you just you're a fan or subscriber and you want to send me a love letter or fan art or anything, I do have a P.O. box. Be sure to check it out down below. Um, I will say this. This did get a little bent. I'm a little bummed about that. But here we go. I didn't I don't think I ordered the Panda Dragoon remake unless it was I might have gotten it from limited run but here we go we got the game looks like we got a poster looks like we got some joy con skins and a switch skin as well some stickers that you can put on your switch nice and of course the uh, do people really use these? Because I, I don't. <laughs> Got a little cloth. Oh, nice. 
Very nice. How much? Um, those switch skins are pretty good though. Now, here's the coup de gras. Oh, it's a big old. Big old thing right here. It's a Panzer Dragoon thing as well. And this we're going to open. Even though, again, the collector in me is like, no, I don't want to open it. We're going to open it. We're going to take a look at it. So, here we go. Unwrapped. And ready. Oh, man. Look at this. Got Panzer Dragoon drawings and stuff. I know he's a big Panzer Dragoon. Uh, RGT. Eat your heart out. So it has a serial number. I have a serial number, so it makes it official. Focus. And it looks like it has a little statue. Pull it out. It's kind of hard to get out. <laughs> it's like a little statue. Thing. Man, that is a heavy sucker right there. Heavy. This is actually pretty cool. And then, of course, another copy of the game. I'm sure it's the same cover. I think. So, yeah, very neat. Thank you very much to Forever Limited. I'm not sure if there's anything underneath that. Nope, there's nothing else. But pretty cool little display box and everything like that. Definitely something nice to have for the game room. <laughs> I'm going to leave a link to their website down below. I appreciate them sending that my way. I definitely did not deserve it. Okay, so back to the news, boys and ghouls. So one game that I had been looking forward to in recent times is uh, Dying Light 2. I remember I played the first one with all my buddies. We had so much fun. Uh, uh, Jason Who from J uh, JKB, uh, I believe Shady J played it with me. Alpha Mega Sin. Great freaking game running around drop kicking zombies and tasering them and stuff. Well, some bad news. One of the games that I was looking forward to has officially been delayed. Dying Light 2. Delayed. So, we got a message. And, um, this is kind of a bummer. You know, especially when you are looking forward to a game. And, uh, it's something that's on your radar. But then you gotta remember... Cyberpunk. <laughs> so let them take their time with it. So uh, I'm going to try to do my best to read this. Hopefully, you know, you guys can get the gist of it. Uh, it says, Today we have an important news to share with you about the development progress on Dying Light 2. Stay human. It's always been our company's goal to build transparent and honest communication with our community, fans, and gamers. Every day we strive to grow in this element. The team is steadily progressing with the production and the game is nearing the finish line. The game is complete and we are currently playtesting it. It is by far the biggest and most ambitious product we have ever project we ever done. Unfortunately, we realized for us to bring the game to level we envision, we need more time to polish and optimize it. That's why we decided to move the release date to February 4th, 2022. So we got a couple months more to wait. I think this is coming out November, I want to say. So they do say we are sorry to keep you all waiting a little longer, but we want the game to meet your highest expectations on release and we don't want to compromise on this. However, you won't have to wait too long to get a deeper look at Dying Light to stay human. Next month, both press and content creators will get their hands on PC and console versions of the game during the upcoming series of preview event events of around the world. They'll be able to share their experiences of this city with you. So ooh, I hope I get a Dying Light, <laughs> you know, the people over there. At uh, Techland, I hope you uh, send me a review copy. <laughs> Just, I'm serious. <laughs> in the meantime, we'd like to thank all our fans around the world. Without your support and feedback, we never would have come so far on this journey. In addition to our regular updates, we'll be gearing up to share some exciting news about the game later this month. 
stay safe and stay human so dying light delayed dying light 2 stay human officially delayed um it's okay um i just know a lot of us were looking forward to playing it including myself uh now continuing on uh we just had a mistake announcement happen destroy all humans to remake announced seemingly by mistake <laughs> now i'm reporting this from ign so a remake of the 2006 game is in fact real so this was leaked um it appears a remake for destroy all humans is real and in development in a now deleted tweet playstation officially announced the destroy all humans 2 repo probed knowing the game will come to ps5 a trailer was also shared in the tweet so yeah <laughs> this was a big mistake they accidentally tweeted it uh there was no release date mentioned the end of the trailer also notes that thq and black forest games are tied to the remake the latter also developed a remake for the original destroy all humans the tweet has since been deleted ahead of a planned thq nordic 10th anniversary live stream so they're gonna have this big presentation coming up the thq nordic um presentation but you can see the earthlings won't know what hit them crypto returns and destroy all humans to reprobed and you can see that was the tweet so yeah it was originally released in 2006 uh on ps2 and xbox it's set 10 years after the game's original events um and uh players control crypto 138 who's a clone of the first games crypto 137 a remake for the game was originally teased earlier this year, but not much info was shared other than Destroy All Humans senior producer Martin Crouch saying that there will be many more details shared soon. So, well, there goes the surprise, right? If you're a fan of Destroy All Humans 2, uh, you're going to be getting a remake. And it'll be on the PS5 as well. Now, speaking of PS5, here's some good news. Um... Ghost of Tsushima's director cut, the director's cut version of it, is the highest rated game since Sly 2. So good on that. I still haven't played the director's cut. I'm in the middle of playing the original Ghost of Tsushima on the PS4. I need to get back to it. But according to this, it uh, sits at 88 average out of 100 on Metacritic. And uh, that's more than the average score of 83 of the original. It's expansion and improved PS5 release that's managed to outscore any of the previous efforts by Sucker Punch, becoming their highest rated game since Sly 2 on the PS2. And this says uh, they have a pretty good track record with games. On their Metacritic page, they have an average score of 83. They've released 10 games so far, with the latest being Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. Most of their games have received an average above 80, save for Infamous First Light. Um, so good on uh, Sucker Punch. First game since Sly 2 um, to have the highest rating. Uh, good on them. I'm going to have to definitely check it out, guys. I know some of y'all keep asking me, am I going to be checking out Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut? I didn't want to double dip with a PS5 version of it, but I, I might. I just might. Um, continuing on. Um, big news. There will be a PlayStation 5 September system update that will be uh, uh launching globally tomorrow uh dreamcast guy did a video about this we're gonna touch on it real quick just in case some of you aren't aware i'm pretty excited about it it's gonna include a lot of new features it says tomorrow we're pleased to launch our second major ps5 system software update to all ps5 owners globally the update includes a variety of enhancements to the PS5 console experience, as well as 3D audio support for built-in TV speakers. It also features M.2 SSD storage expansion, which enables PS5 players to store and play PS5 games, PS4 games, and media apps directly from the expanded high-speed storage. That is the biggest thing out of that. Out of anything that's going to be on that, that's the hugest thing. They're also expanding mobile features with support for ps remote play over mobile networks starting tomorrow and the ability to share screen broadcasts on ps app starting next thursday september 23rd so that's huge too um pretty big i'm actually excited for it now here's a little bullet point thing about it uh new ux enhancements that make it easier for players to view personalized and manager game content so control center customization you can now customize your control center more freely uh 
enhanced game base so now you can easily um read and write messages to friends and parties directly from the game base uh you can see game library and home screen updates screen reader controls new gaming and social experience customization so the playstation now resolution selector and connection test tool um uh, so you could choose between 720p or 1080p to accommodate your preferred video resolution for game streaming a uh, new accolade type is leader so you could choose a new accolade if you want to give somebody an accolade automatic capture of personal best videos look at all, all these features new trophy tracker um 3d audio support for built-in tv speakers pretty good um i think i can get behind this but that storage expansion is the biggest thing right there um so m.2 ssd uh you can install it in the ps5 console or the ps5 digital edition console uh once installed the uh ps5 or ps5 digital edition m.2 ssd storage can be used to download copy and launch ps5 and ps4 games as well as media apps so look at that so the mm m2 dot ssd must meet the minimum performance and size requirements outlined so they do have a page that says it so you got to be careful and follow the installation process on that but that is a big one right there uh and then last but not least this touches on um an article that we read yesterday this is with the nvidia um leak the geforce now leak that came out they have confirmed this is all real but claims that some of the games are speculative so company claims database containing god of war pc gears 5 and more was used for testing so they're saying this is a testing thing um this leak was pretty big though and led to some interest and stuff so we'll see what happens out of this uh they played down a recent data mine that appeared to reveal a number of unannounced games this week including a steam version of god of war and gears 5 and, and a blog post accompanying um video posted on monday developer eager july documented how he was able to access the database for the streaming service so we talked about this we saw a lot of stuff grand theft auto trilogy remasters god of war final fantasy crisis half-life and justice they confirmed the list is real and claimed that it was used only for internal testing uh they said nvidia is aware of unauthorized published game list with both release and in or speculative titles used only for internal tracking and testing a company spokesperson told wccf tech inclusion on the list is neither confirmation nor announcement of any game and video took immediate action to remove access to the list no confidential game builds or personal info were exposed now this does say while the much of the list could have been made up of placeholder titles and titles that may not actually see the light of day VGC first reported last year that Resident Evil 4 Remake has been in development since 2018, while VGC sources have also corroborated reports that GTA remasters are in development. So, according to Windows Central, many of the Microsoft code names mentioned on the NVIDIA database are related to actual projects, some of which have already been announced as real, such as Playgrounds Fable Reboot. It also claims that GeForce Now has played a prominent role in game development throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, providing remote access and work from home environments, which could explain why work in progress titles would be listed on the service. Unlike most of the titles on the list, God of War is specifically listed for release on Steam. PS5 games, Returnal, and Demon Souls are also on the list, for example, but unlike God of War, they're not attributed to a distribution platform. So, yeah, it goes on to say a couple other things like that we already know. So, NVIDIA is downplaying it. Um, I'm going to lean towards that's just uh, damage control, precautionary, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they do pop up on NVIDIA GeForce now. Uh, anyways, that's it for today's video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the format. Let me know by hitting that like button or disliking it. Let me hear your comments down below. Uh, and subscribe if you haven't. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. As always, have a great day.